Are you struggling to get super sharp photos? Today I'm going to answer this question by sharing with you the best settings and techniques I use for each different situation regardless of the camera I use. Now I know how much time means for you so I'm going to put five minutes on the clock and we're going to try and get through this in five minutes. So there's five main points you need to think about. Three in regards to settings, two in regards to scenarios. So the three settings you need to think about are aperture, shutter speed, and focus. And the two scenarios you need to think about is, is the subject moving or is the subject standing still? Now, when you combine all these points together, like I'm about to show you, it really doesn't matter what camera you use, your image will be sharp. So let's talk about the different scenarios. Is your subject standing still or are they moving? So let's tackle still subjects first. So with the settings for still subjects, you'll want your shutter speed to be one to three times greater than your focal length. So if you're shooting at 30 millimeters, your shutter speed should probably be around 1 over 90. You can go down as low as 1 over 30, but you really want to make sure you're not creating any extra movement. And it's also good that if you create three points of contact. So if you're holding your camera to your eye, maybe you're kneeling down as well, you've got three points of contact. Or you're resting on something, your camera's resting on something, then it's okay to shoot 1 over 30, but always try to go maybe two to three times higher. The next point you want to think about is how much of this image do I want in focus? Do I only want the subject in focus? Do I want the whole of the image in focus? If you're shooting a subject who's still, maybe you want to shoot at a aperture of about 1.8 all the way up to f4 maybe something like that that should keep the rest of the photo blurry with your subject in focus however if you're shooting landscapes you really want that whole of the image to be in focus so you want to shoot somewhere between f8 and f16 this will leave the whole of the image looking super sharp and crisp and in focus so finally we go into focus modes i use afs for single focus which basically means it will focus directly on one subject and hold it there if it moves the subject will still be focused originally on where it's at so this is very important. So when you're shooting something like sports or wildlife or racing cars, whatever it may be, everything's happening really fast and you have to have your shutter speed high enough to capture and freeze that moment in time. And a great place to start is one over 600 and then move up from there. So if I'm shooting something really fast and it takes up a lot of the frame, I'm probably going to be want to be shooting at around one over 1,400 or even higher, depending on how fast everything's happening. The key here is to take a photo and then replay it and see what it's like. Is it crisp? Do I need to up my shutter speed? Can I go down on the shutter speed? Is everything looking sharp and in focus? Also something else to consider here is that so as the subject is moving, you're also moving. So you really need to keep that in mind and consideration. Even if your subject is moving slow, you might also be moving, which adds to that movement. So really think about that as well. So for the aperture for a moving subject, generally I'll keep it as low as I can. If the lens can go to 1.8, that's great. 2.8, 4, whatever it may be, I keep it very low because I don't really want anything else to be in focus. I don't care if it's blurry, just as long as my subject is in focus. So if you do want everything else in focus, you just have to bump up the ISO. So I can live with a bit of noise, but what I can't live with is a blurry image. Once you get into post, you can't do anything about that blurry image. You can do something about the noise. So if you need to, to bump up that ISO, just bump it up. So move on to focusing for a moving subject. So what I generally use is AFC, which is autofocus continuous. So as the subject is moving, my focus mode is AFC. It's going to be locked onto that person, their eye, whatever it may be, and it's going to be focusing on that. So this camera is on AFC at the moment, and if I move closer to it, it should focus and if I move further away it should also focus but it's also a good test of my camera. So with these five points you're really guaranteed to get super sharp images regardless of the camera you're using. All you need to think about is, is the subject moving? Is the subject still? Then you can move on to your settings from there. So is the subject still? Ah, uh, low shutter speed. Is the subject moving? High shutter speed. That's the most important. Then you go onto your aperture and your focus mode after that. So this is basically the trick to get super sharp photos. If you don't nail any of these, you'll notice your images will be blurry, out of focus, and you can't do anything with them in post. So if you can master these and get them done in the field, as long as they are sharp in the field, you can do everything else you want to do in post. So I did promise you guys two tips. Here's number one, ISO. So ISO is how sensitive your camera sensor is to the light coming in. So the higher the ISO, the more noise and grain will be in your image. The lower the ISO, the less grain, the less noise will be in your image. Now different cameras handle noise differently. Sony, for instance, is very well known for handling noise very well. Now, if you can keep your ISO as low as possible, even while maintaining good light, good exposure, your shutter speed's great, that's perfect. That's what you want. However, if you need to turn up your ISO for whatever reason it may be to get a higher shutter speed because your image is a turning out blurry, don't think about it. Don't be afraid of it. Just turn the ISO up. When you get home, you can't fix up a blurry photo, but you can fix up noise. Also now the noise reduction in Lightroom 2024 is unbelievable. It is so good. On some of my images, I've bumped up the ISO to like 32,000, taken it into Lightroom and done noise reduction, and it's just come out beautiful. 
super crisp, super sharp. So just keep that in mind. Don't be afraid of your ISO. So if you do want super sharp images and you want to upgrade your gear, definitely think about lenses before you think about camera bodies. If you're running a cheap lens on a really good camera, your images are going to be average. If you're running a great lens on an average camera, your images will be a lot better. Always think about glass. For instance, if you put on a cheap pair of sunglasses, it looks like crap. If you put on really good sunglasses, you're like, Wow, it's the same for cameras. So we didn't make it under five minutes. Who would have thought? But if you did enjoy this, please leave a thumbs up. Um, share it to your friends if you found it helpful and hopefully it helps them as well. And I hope you have a great week and enjoy. See you next time.